Hi friends, so this is an interesting article and worth making a video about, but I'll start it by saying this article makes me feel very jealous. Like, you know, yeah. it's a little frustrating, but it's my own fault. I, I always operated in isolation, you know, so it's like I was saying all the stuff regarding the left, rights, identity politics, multiculturalism, yada, 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 that Jordan Peterson was saying before he was ever known by anybody on YouTube. I mean, the channel's been around since 2012, I think, but I really got active around 2014. Uh, he became, he hit big in 2016. But the point is, it's not about what I'm saying or what he's saying, ultimately. It's about the manner in which it's being presented. And so, the, the reason he's successful and I'm not, or there, well, there are multiple, one of which is he has, quote-unquote, skin in the game. Somebody put this as a comment one time, and I thought it was very insightful and right on the money. Which is, there's no, there's no mistaking skin in the game for, for something else. You know, he, he took a stand against uh, a bad policy, and... Continue to take that stand and stay strong despite the immense amount of pushback he received, and that deserves credit. And it's true, I don't have skin in the game in that capacity, in that in that fashion, I should say. Um, but I nevertheless, when I when I read this stuff, it makes me sad to know that. You know, I'll probably always be perceived as a, a latecomer to this party as as uh, somebody who is an imitator in some regard. But, I mean, I, I'm i just now really finding out a lot about all these guys. I heard about Jordan Peterson. I'm sitting got big. People started pointing him out to me. I kept hearing from lots of people, you should, you should check out this guy's video. He's saying a lot of the same things you are. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I did, and I was like, it kind of made me jealous or mad or something. I was, uh, so I was just like, ah, I don't want to even think about this. Why I don't watch other people's video. I had a little conversation with myself about remembering to to isolate oneself intellectually and creatively so that one isn't influenced by others too much. It's an old and dumb notion of mine, but one I keep coming back to sometimes. Uh, Regardless, I mean, the thing is, now I'm very interested in engaging with uh, with the ideas presented by other um, YouTubers and by articles like this. So, what's interesting here is, it, it defines it. It's a collection of iconoclastic thinkers, academic renegades, and media personalities who are having a rolling conversation on podcasts, YouTube, and Twitter, and in sold-out auditoriums that sound unlike anything else happening, at least publicly, in the culture right now. Feeling largely locked out of legacy outlets, they are rapidly building their own mass media channels. The closest thing to a phone book for the IDW is a sleek website that lists the dramatis personae of the network, including Mr. Harris, Mr. Weinstein, and his brother and sister-in-law, the evolutionary biologist Brett Weinstein and Heather Hain, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Douglas Murray, Majid Nawaz, uh, Ayan Hersi Ali. Yeah, I like this chick. She wrote a really good book. I read it. It's called uh, uh, Infidel, I think. They have a little in common politically. Brett and Eric Weinstein and Miss Hain were Bernie Sanders reporters. Yada, yada, yada. They all have distinct qualities. They're willing to dis disagree ferociously but talk civilly about nearly every meaningful subject, religion, abortion, immigration, and the nature of consciousness. Second, in an age in which popular feelings about the way things ought to be often override facts about the way things actually are. Each is determined to resist parodying what's politically convenient. And third, some have paid for this commitment of being purged from institutions that have become increasingly hostile to unorthodox thought and have found receptive audiences elsewhere. People are starved for controversial opinions, and they're starved for an actual conversation. Well, I mean, I'm having an actual conversation with this article here. And I have lots of actual conversations with actual people, too, but I think the, the idea here is people want the ideas to be argued about, not just people to be arguing against each other. 
Um, I'm going to talk about this Miss Owens person who's kind of who's a big Trump person. IDW has bigger goals than anyone's bugs or celebrity. And in fact, I, I've said from the get-go that my goal here with this channel, and I think this is, article is trying to find the words for this, uh, is to make a discursive environment in which engaging in discourse well is the ultimate goal. So in other words, it's a means-based environment. If we're arguing about things properly, we'll reach the right conclusions. It's a discursive meta goal, I think, that, it, that is being trying to be described here, that is certainly true of my channel, and I think it's probably true of these individuals we're talking about as well. In their eagerness to gain popular traction, are the members of the IDW aligning themselves with people whose views and methods are poisonous? There is no direct route into the intellectual dark web, but the quickest path is to demonstrate you aren't afraid to confront your own tribe. So no, it's got a very, it's it has a uh, kind of uh, purging selection, right? That you know, a discourse-driven discourse meta frame of the kind I'm talking about will necessarily eliminate wrongnesses that don't withstand muster because. It's an adversarial, argumentational, rhetorical environment. So, weak shit doesn't fly. There's some scary stories about how fucked up people are in their perspectives like this. What if we had found a culture that was ritually blinding every third child? And she actually said, it would depend on why they were doing it. Yeah, that kind of moral relativism needs to be attacked directly for good reason. Um, why transgender kids should wait to transition citing re research that found a majority of gender dysmorphic children grow out of their dysphoria oh, yeah. that's so sad I figured out how to monetize social justice warriors <laughs> said Jordan Peterson the New York Review of Books attacking him a sanctimonious prick and said he'd happily slap him. On the, his Twitter feed, he called the writer So this is an interesting article. Yep. Now you have to it's on the street. Well, Yeah, well, I certainly... I'm not one of those few people. <laughs> I mean, I, I've said plenty of critical things about Trump. He's a fucking scumbag. And I certainly don't associate myself in it. See, I don't, I don't like the left-right thing. It's difficult to drive boundaries around, blah, 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 blah. All right, so... You have to understand that the IDW emerged as a response to a world where perfectly reasonable intellectuals were being regularly mislabeled by activists, institutions, and mainstream journalists with every career-ending epithet from Islamophobe to Nazi. Once IDW folks saw that people like Ben Shapiro were generally smart, highly informed, and awfully princely, often princely in difficult conversations, it's more understandable that occasionally a few frogs get kissed 
here and there as some IDW members went in search of other maligned princes. But people who pride themselves on pursuing truth and telling it plainly should be capable of applying these labels when they're deserved. It seems to me if you're willing to sit across from Alex Jones or Mike Cernovich and take them seriously, there's a high probability that you're either cynical or stupid. If there's a reason for shortening the IDW, it's the for shorting the IDW, it's the inability of certain members to see this as a fatal error. Well, I mean, I'm willing to sit across the table from Alex Jones and talk to him all he wants. But am I going to grant the legitimacy of his ridiculous claims? No. That doesn't prevent me from talking to him. Uh, so, lots of interesting things here. You know, in the, in the news. But it was a buzzing in my ear and I want to talk about something more interesting. It didn't matter. It turned out a number of his friends all like him. Democrats with the full range of social positions you'd expect had watched the video as well and they were talking to each other about it. The boys graduated from high school and went off to colleges. Was perhaps the only sustained argument against identity politics they had heard in their lives. That might seem like a small thing, but it's not. With identity politics off the table, it's possible to talk about all different kinds of things. Exactly. So, for sure... The book became the occasion for vicious profiles and editorials, but it's difficult to attack the work on ideological grounds because it was an apolitical self-help book that was at once more literary and more helpful than most, and that was, moreover, a commercial success. All of this frustrated the critics. It's just common sense, they would say, in one arch way or another, and that in itself was telling. Why were they so angry about common sense? Good question. It's hard to think of a best-selling self-help book whose author has not appeared on the classic morning shows. Those programs, Today and Good Morning America and CBS This Morning, are almost entirely devoted to the subject of self-help. But the producers did their part, and Peterson did not go to their studios to sit among the lifestyle celebrities and talk for a few minutes about the psychological benefits of simple interventions in one day's life. This should have stopped progress. Peterson was by then engaged in something that can only be compared to a conventional book tour. If conventional book tours routinely put authors in front of live audiences well in excess of 2,500 people, in addition to the untold millions more listening to podcasts and watching videos. The left has an obvious and pressing need to unperson him. What he and the other members of the so-called intellectual dark web are offering is kryptonite to identity politics. There is an eagerness to attach reputation-destroying ideas to him, such as that he is a supporter of something called enforced monogamy. There is also the inaccurate belief that he refuses to refer to transgender people by their preferred pronouns, by the gender pronoun conforming to their identity. What he refuses to do is abide by any laws that would require compelled speech. I agree that distinction is hugely important. There are plenty of reasons for individual readers to dislike Jordan Peters. He's a union, he's not a union, and that isn't your type of cup of tea. He is, by his own very admission, a very serious person you think he should lighten up now and then. You find him boring, you're not interested in either identity politics or the arguments against it. There are many legitimate reasons to disagree with him on a number of subjects that many people of good will do, but there is no coherent reason for the left's obliterating and irrational hatred of Jordan Peterson. What then account for it? It is because the left, while it currently seems ascendant in our houses of culture and art, has in fact entered its decadent late phase and is deeply vulnerable. The left is afraid, not of Peterson, but of the ideas he promotes. Well, absolutely that's true, to the extent that we make this distinction. I think the distinction itself is probably not entirely useful to make. The left and right distinction, what you're talking about are utilitarians and deontologists, basically. You're talking about ends-based frames and means-based frames. For those who don't use explicitly an ends beast, ends slash means based frame, then they're making their decisions more or less arbitrarily. They probably don't have any frame. So they're not aware that you can frame things as those things, and they don't, and so they have a mishmash of different perspectives. If they prefer perspectives that are communitarian in quality, then they're le we call them left. If they prefer uh, perspectives that are statist or individualist. I mean, if it's individualist, then it's libertarian. If they, the thing is, libertarians are the deontologists. Conservatives and liberals are the utilitarians. Uh, but meta-rationals uh, might be deemed individuals who 
who understand that none of those three parties are right, that each individual makes advocacies consistent with their own identity needs foremost. So my heartfelt political principalism is ultimately expression of my own need to be consistent with what I've said before and to maintain my ego and stuff like that, right? That there's an illocutionary purpose behind everything. What people on the left, the right, and libertarians tend to forget is that the people who are running for office and stuff, they are illocutionary beings first and foremost, as will I be. And so we ought not afford them the presumption of goodwill and good faith. <sighs> The thing, of course, is people want there to be an enemy, the left, or the right, because they want to do utilitarian calculi as well. Say the left are wrong because not just they're wrong, but because they're harmful. Why is Kimberly not out here yet? being so goddamn stubborn. Culture is at a dead end when it decides someone has no standing to speak. And that's a good a good uh, good summation of it by Obama. The alt right venerates identity politics just as fervently as the left, as the title of a recent essay reproduced on the alt right website Countercurrents reveals Jordan Peterson's rejection of identity politics allies allows white ethnocide. If you think that a backlash to the kind of philosophy that resulted in the nation's poetry implosion, the Times higher and Obama's distress call isn't at least partially responsible for the election of Donald Trump, you're dreaming. And if you think the only kind of people who reject such madness are Republicans, you are similarly deluded. All across the country, there are people who are repelled by the current White House as they are by the countless and increasingly broke expressions of identity politics that dominate so much of the culture. These are people who aren't looking for an ideology, they are looking for ideas, and many of them are getting better at discerning the good from the bad. Well, I'd like to say I'm very good at that, discerning the good from the bad ideas. And uh, I have a lot to say about it. So hopefully I can get involved in some of these conversations with some of these other people. Um, even if it's from the sidelines at the moment. Once one reaches a certain size, if I could reach that size, which I probably never will, I, my subscriber rate has gone from averaging almost 150 a month to... 22, 21, 20 or something. I don't know why it's fallen so precipitously except maybe I've exhausted the the set of potential viewers. I've pulled out all the ones who might like me already. So then there's not really many left who might like me or something. That's possible, I guess. But you can see here, 22 subscribers in the last 30 days, 28 days. This is, it, it, seriously, it was up to almost 150 at one point for a couple months. So, that's a dramatic drop. I'm not sure why that occurred exactly. Maybe I started making bad videos. I don't know. Um, but the views are are heading up a little bit, which is nice. I'd like to see this over 40 because, you know, if you get 28,000 views, that's 1,000 a day. 
42 is 1500 today. I'd like to get at least that. I've had that for long stretches before, but I'm not having it now. So, I, I mean, the thing is, of course, YouTube's always changing its algorithms and its approach, and, you know, things fluctuate, and who knows, maybe it's just the viewership is changing, too, or something, I don't know. That's it. This video kind of rambly. Maybe I'm not going to put this up. I'm not sure. Probably not. But I'll watch it first. If I like it, I'll put it up.